Hi, today we're going to be talking about creating NumPy arrays from scratch. You can follow along with me by downloading the Python notebook that I have open right now in the link in the description. You can open the notebook in either Jupyter Notebooks or in Google Labs. Right now I have it in Google Labs. So if you open up the notebook, go down a few sections, you should, you should see a section called creating arrays from scratch. In my previous video, we actually introduced creating NumPy arrays from Python lists, and also we introduced Python lists. So this is the next installment of the video of the, of the topic, uh, creating arrays from scratch. And what we're actually gonna do now is we're gonna create arrays using functions using NumPy functions. And this is especially handy for creating larger arrays so you don't have to actually manually type out all the values, all the numbers. Um, and you can create large arrays, large NumPy arrays just by using functions. So I'm gonna introduce, you know, uh, maybe around 10 functions or so that you could use to, to create a NumPy array. All of this is already coded up in the Python notebook with comments about what each function does. So let's just go one by one, let's just go through them. So the first one is to create an integer array with 10 zeros. And so what I have here is a function called zeros and it's a NumPy function because I am calling the NumPy array. And if you're just starting at this point, remember that you need to import the NumPy library. And so if you go up in the, in the notebook, you'll see this line of code here that says import NumPy as NP. So execute this line of code and then go back to this line of code here. You'll be able to use the NumPy function zeros. So if I actually break this down, what the parameters of this function is, is basically asking for are the number of integers, the number of values that you want in your array, I want 10. And then what the data type is, I want my data type to be integers and the shorthand for integers is int. So if I execute this line of code, I get 10 values here of zeros. I know it's zeros because the function is called zero. So I know it's just going to give me zeros. Um, but I also have 10 of these and that's exactly what I wanted uh, from entering 10 in the parameter. Right, and so now let's go to the next one. Let's actually create a NumPy array of ones. I want this to actually be a multi-dimensional array with three rows and four or five columns and I want the data type to be a float. So I want the, this data type to have a decimal to it. And so all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put in the fact that I want a three by five array, it's three rows, five columns of all ones, and I want the data type to be float. And so if I execute that, that's exactly what I get. I get three rows, five columns, all 1.0, so they're all floats. All right, so this is handy to create, you know, large multi-dimensional arrays of all ones, or you can even do the same thing with this function zero. You can, you can create a multi-dimensional array uh, with the zeros function. So if I wanted something other than a zero or one, maybe just, you know, a, a value that I want to put in, I could actually use the function full. So in this case, what this function is doing is it's going to create for me a three by five multi-dimensional array and fill in the value of 3.14. So if I execute on that, that's exactly what I get. I get a, a three by five matrix and I see all the values are 3.14, all right? So now stepping to the next function, I'm gonna create a linear sequence that starts at zero, ends at 20, and steps by two. So the, the, a function that can do this is called a range. It will give me a sequence exactly 
like I want, uh, like this is written out right here, starting at zero, ending at 20, and stepping by two. What you're gonna see though, is that it doesn't actually display the value 20. There actually is no 20. And this is a very important concept in Python in that the start, uh, the starting value is almost always inclusive. And so if I say the starting value I want is zero, it's going to display zero as the starting value. And in Python, almost every single time when I'm entering in an ending value, it's going to be exclusive, which means that it's not going to display the, the ending value. It's going to stop short of the ending value of 20. And so if I'm stepping by two, it means like I, I just want the even numbers. The last even num number before I hit 20 is 18. And that's exactly what I see here. So just be really mindful of this. This is 99% of the time, this is how Python works. The starting is inclusive. The ending value is almost always exclusive of the number that you're entering in. All right, where this, where the there's an exception to the rule is with this function here, linspace. So using linspace, I want to create an array of five values evenly spaced between zero and one. So evenly spaced, there's another word for that is linearly spaced, and that's why you have a function called linspace. So in linspace, the starting value is zero, the ending value is one, and I want five values in between zero and one. So why I say this is the exception to the rule that I explained above is because linspace will include the ending value. All right, so this is, you know, 99% of the time, the ending value is gonna be excluded with linspace. Just remember that the ending value is included. But if I wanted to create a, an evenly spaced array between one value and another value, I can easily do so with linspace. All right, so moving on to the next, the next uh, function, if I wanted to create an array of random values uh, that are uniformly distributed, I can do so using this function called random.random. .random. So in this case, I want a multi-dimensional array. I want a three by three array, three rows, three columns. And I want the values to be between zero and one. And so using random random, they by default, the values will be zero, between zero and one and they'll be uniformly distributed. And so if I execute on this line of code, I get exactly that. All my values are between zero and one and I have a matrix of three rows and three columns. So if I wanna tweak it a little bit, I, I, I don't exactly want the default zero to one um, or I want a different standard deviation or a different mean. What I could do is use this normal function, so random.normal, to create an array, a three by three array here that has a mean of zero, has a standard deviation of one. So the parameters, just like what you see in this uh, third comment here is that in order to use the function normal, you have to input the mean, then the standard deviation and the, the array size that you want. In this case, I want a three by three. So I, if I run this line of code, I get exactly that. The mean here, if you actually do the math, will be zero. The standard deviation will compute out to one, and obviously you see the three by three array here. So I can I can play with it a little bit. If I want the mean to be 10, and I want the standard deviation to be around like say three, I want this to be maybe a two by, let's actually do five by five array, so we can see extra numbers you'll see something that makes sense. Like I believe this, I believe that the mean is probably around 10 with a standard deviation of three and obviously there, it's a five by five array. So this is, this is a function you can play around with, uh, but these are the parameters here that you would need to actually uh, make that function work. 
All right. So another function in this uh, that that corresponds to the random function is this rand int. If I wanted random integers, um, I can use this rand int function. So it's it's very much the same thing. So if I execute this, I'm basically I'm basically getting a a an array that's three by three. It's spanning from zero to 10, right? So it's, it, we're not entering in the mean or the standard deviation or any, anything like that. We're actually entering the, entering in the start and end of uh, the, the random inter, integer interval. So just remember that. So, you know, maybe what I'll do is I will type this in just so you remember that it's the start value to stop value. And remember, the stop value is always exclusive. I wrote 10 here. I don't see a 10 here at all. That's because it's actually only going to go up to 9. So stop value and array size. There you go. So two other functions that I want to want to point out. There's an I function here that allows you to create an identity matrix. And if you don't know what an identity matrix is, it's a concept from linear algebra. It's basically having uh, ones go diagonal just like this and everything else be, be zero. So if you're doing any computational math or comp computational, building any computational algorithms that need identity matrices, this is one way to actually build one using the I function. So the number that you're seeing here is actually the type of the size of array that you want. So if I if I typed in five, then I'm going to get a five by five uh, matrix. All right. And then the last function that we could use to create NumPy arrays is an empty function. It's actually kind of funny. This one will take values that happen to be stored in memory. So you don't even know what values they're going to that's that that's going to be displayed. It's just whatever is stored in memory on your computer or if you're using Google Colabs, whatever is on the Google server, that's what's going to be outputted. So I'm all I'm doing is typing in three so that I get a three by three or a three matrix or a one dimensional array that has three values. And in this case, it's all ones. If I do five, I'm going to get five values, all ones. So that's what the, the empty matrix is. If you don't even care what the values are, you can just create that on the fly really quickly. So the last, the last topic I want to talk about are NumPy data types. And here in this notebook, there's a list of all of the data types that is possible in a NumPy array. You have Boolean, which is true and false. You have integers, floats, complex numbers. And really what, what that means is that you can, you have your pick of data type. So you can add, if you're adding two numbers, you can add floats together or you can have integers together. You can add, add complex numbers together. Um, just, just the only rule is that each NumPy array has to have uh, only one data type. And so you with with every single function, you can explicitly call uh, and assign a data type to that array. So for example, in this case, in these uh, examples here, if I'm going to create an array of 10 zeros I, and I want the data type to be a 16 bit integer, I'm just going to explicitly write out D type equals in 16. And another way of writing that is using it as a Python object, np.int16. So just to basically illustrate this example, I'm going to create a, a, um, an, a NumPy array of zeros, 10 zeros, and I'm going to, I'm going to force the data type to be a 16-bit integer. That's exactly what I see as the display here. And then if I want to just double check one way to double check that is using this attribute called dtype. And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to call the variable a 
and I'm going to just write dot D type. And if I do that, it's going to say that the variable A, the NumPy array A, has a data type of int 16 or a 16-bit integer. All right? So that's the introduction to NumPy.